Hello students, uh, today we are going to discuss about one parasite that is Chistosoma hematobium. <coughs> so this Chistosoma hematobium, it is a vesicle blood fluid before it is known, it was known as Bilharzia hematobium. So it has been endemic in the Nile Valley in Egypt for millennia and its eggs have been found in the renal pelvis of Egyptian since uh, 1250 to 1000 BC. So this chistosome antigens have been identified by ELISA, enzyme link immunoassay, immunosorbent assay. So the adult worm, it was described in 1851 by Bill Hartz in Cairo and the life cycle including the larval stage in the snail was worked out by Leper in 1915 in Egypt and although maximally entrenched in the Nile Valley this Chistosoma hematobium is also endemic in most parts of Africa and in West Asia so it is quite a common infection about uh, 200 million pe persons are at risk of infection and 90 million are infected by this uh, Chistosoma hematobium globally. Okay, so regarding the habitat of this parasite, it will mostly it is mostly uh, present or it stays in the adult worm. It lives or resides in the vesicle and pelvic plexus of veins okay <coughs> so coming to the morphology we have the morphology under this we have adult worm and the eggs so in adult worm you will see we have the male and the female okay we have the male and female adult worm so you can refer the diagram given here the in case of male it is longer if we compare to the uh, female okay the male is 10 to 15 mm long by 1 mm thick and covered by a discovered by a finely tuberculated cuticle okay then it has two muscular suckers the oral sucker being small and the ventral sucker large and prominent and beginning immediately behind the ventral sucker and extending to the gradual end in the gynocophoric canal in which the female worm is held so here the other female is long and slender 20 mm by 0.25 mm with the cuticular tubercles confined to the two ends okay so the gravid worms contains around 20 to 30 eggs in its uterus at one time and these can lay around 300 eggs per day or they can pass around 300 eggs per day so that is for the case of adult worms next we have the egg here the eggs as you can see right it is ovoid about 150 micrometer by 50 micrometer mm. it is nanopercolated with a brownish yellow transparent shell carrying a terminal spine at one pole if you see the end of one side it carries a terminal spine at one pole here the terminal spine it is uh, being characteristic of the species so that is mostly about the morphology, adult worm and the eggs. So the mechanism of egg expulsion, we have this mechanism. Out here the eggs are laid usually in the small values of the vesicle and pelvic plexus, though sometimes they are laid in the mesenteric portal system, pulmonary arterioles and other ectopic sites. Then the eggs are laid one behind the other with the spine pointing posteriorly 
then from the venules the eggs make, make their own way through the vesicle wall by the piercing action of the spine assisted by the mounting pressure within the venules and a lytic substance released by the eggs. So these eggs pass into the lumen of the urinary bladder together with some extra vaseated blood and they are discharged in the urine particularly towards the end of micturition. Okay, for some unknown reasons, the eggs are passed in urine more during midday than at any other time of the day. So the eggs laid in ectopic sites generally die and evoke local tissue reactions. They may be found for instance in rectal biopsies but are seldom passed life in feces. Okay. So that is for the mechanism of egg expulsion. So coming up next we have is the life cycle of Chistosoma rheumatobium or any of the Chistosoma species. Okay. So this Chistosoma passes its life cycle in two holes. The first, the definitive host out here is the man, right? You can see in the diagram and the intermediate host we have is the snails fresh water snails so definitive host is the human we don't have any animal out here and the intermediate host is the fresh water snails and the in infective form of this parasite is the circaria larva okay so here the eggs that are passed in urine are embryonated and hatched in water under suitable conditions to release the free living ciliated myracidia. Okay, then this myracidia swim about in water and on encountering a suitable intermediate host penetrate into its tissues and reach its liver. Then the intermediate host or the snails of bullinous species in Africa. In India, the intermediate host is the limpet. We have the another species or uh, Ferrisia tinis. Okay, so these are the different species of snails. So development in snail, how this takes place. So inside the snail, the Myracidia lose their cilia and in about four to eight weeks, successively pass through the stages of the first and second generation sporosis. Okay, you can refer the diagram at the same time. They will uh, pass through the stages of the first and second generation sporosis. Then here, large number of cercari are produced by asexual reproduction within the second generation sporosis. The cercaria has an elongated ovoid body and forked tail or we also call it forcocerus cercaria. Okay, then the cercari escape from the snail then it swarms swarms of cercari swim about in water for about uh, one to three days. If during that period they be they come into contact with persons bathing or wading in the water they penetrate through their through their um, unbroken skin and skin penetration is facilitated by lytic substances secreted by penetration glands present in the cercaria okay then that is the development in snail Coming to the next is development in man or human. Out here on entering the skin, how this parasite will develop, right? So on entering the skin, the cercari shed their tails and become chistosomulae, which enter the peripheral venules. Okay, then they start a long migration through the vena cava into the right side of the heart the pulmonary circula circulation 
the left side of the heart and the systemic circulation ultimately they will reach the liver then in the intrahepatic portal veins the chistosomely grow and will grow and become sexually differentiated adolescents in about 20 days after they enter the skin or after skin penetration then they start migrating against the bloodstream into the inferior mesenteric veins ultimately reaching the vesicle and pelvic venous plexus where they mature mate and begin laying eggs they will start to lay eggs then the eggs will start appearing in urine usually around 10 to 12 weeks after circarial penetration so here the adult worms may live around for up to 20 to 30 years okay that is the lifespan of the adult worm so that's all about the life the morphology and the life cycle of chistosoma hematobium so the next portion i am going to talk is the whatever is left out is the pathogenesis and the lab diagnosis in the next part of the video thank you